Feathered Serpent. Feathered Serpent. Captain's log, stardate 5097.3. Starfleet reports major military activity in the Klingon sector near Krakur, a planet on the edge of Klingon space. Intelligence indicates that the Klingons are mobilizing a large fleet to search for a renegade who is responsible for a disruption of unknown nature on that planet. Federation sensors have found a faint energy trail leading to the planet Zam-4 in the Digifile system. We've been ordered by Starfleet to track down the source of the energy <coughs> and discover what happened on Frakul before the Klingon fleet enters Federation space. If we are not successful, Federation and the Klingon Empire may find themselves at war once again. Save me game. Replace pre delete pre replace pre. All right. <clears throat> Did you fall? Which is I think this star right here. Uh, what about that one? No, it's not that one. It's this one. All right. Here we go. Captain, a Klingon battle cruiser has entered the system. Open hailing frequencies. This is Captain James T. Kirk of the USS Enterprise. <clears throat> Klingon battle cruiser, you are in Federation space. You must leave immediately. I am Commander Taras of the Nisra. We are in pursuit of a genocidal criminal. We are performing an act of mercy in removing him from your space. Naturally, you will remove your vessel from this system. For your own safety, of course. I think we can take care of ourselves, Taraz, which is more than I can say for you, if the Nisra does not leave Federation space at once. You are in direct violation of the Organian Treaty, Mister. If you have a problem, have your fleet commander take it up with them. If a Federation criminal were to pass into Klingon space, you'd be saying the same thing to me. Who do you think you're trying to fool, Taraz? Get your ship out of here now. I think we can take care of ourselves, Taraz, which is more than I can say for you. If the Nisra... You are in direct violation of the Organian Treaty, Mister. If you have a... If we are not allowed to capture this criminal captain, you may do this for us. We insist that we remain here to monitor the situation, but we will take no action. Provided that you can bring him to us in 12 hours. Agreed. Vessels of war are not allowed in Federation space. You will pull back to the Organian neutral zone and do so immediately. Agreed. Sulu, take us to orbit. Better in standard orbit. I have pinpointed the source of the energy trail from Hakur. Hakur. <clears throat> Assemble a landing party. Unless we find the so-called criminal, we're going to war. Oh, wow. And same party. <laughs> oh. Okay. Greetings, my children. What's a I can barely That's a summon imagine from Final that Fantasy. you have come so far. I am hey. Captain James T. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. Did you know the Klingons are looking for you? I'm Captain James T. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. What did you do to get the Klingons so upset? We're not your children, and we don't appreciate this wild goose chase you forced us into. I am Captain James T. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. Did you know the Klingons are looking for you? <coughs> I'm Captain James T. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. I am Captain James The Klingons? Amazing. This is the first time one of my missions has produced results so swiftly. Listen, mister. Any missions conducted within Klingon space fully jeopardize the peace. Damn right the results were swift. The Klingons have been raiding colonies looking for you. Listen, mister. Any missions conducted within Klingon... Jeopardize the peace? Hardly. Peace is what I preach. I am Quetzalcoatl, as you well know from the proud history of your world. Quetzalcoatl? How fitting you would name yourself after one of the most bloody-handed gods in Earth's history. Bloody-handed? My people love 
peace. <clears throat> Your followers regularly sacrificed other believers to you after you left, offering you their still beating hearts. Ha, you mean your followers loved pieces. They slaughtered other believers hoping you'd return. Your followers regularly sacrificed other believers. Impossible, you must be lying. And then your followers were destroyed because when white men arrived on that continent, they were believed to be you in your promised return. Your people perverted your teachings, then were destroyed by it. Foul, lying creatures! My gift was wasted upon you! Be gone! Did we beam? Here we are not the inheritors of the noble Aztec world. What you have said has greatly disturbed me. You should not lie so. You shall remain here until you have learned the error of angering Quetzalcoatl. Those vines would be useful to escape, if we could reach them. Do I look like a Houdini to you? I'm afraid you're going to have to pull the rabbit out of the hat on this one. You pick up some rocks from the pile. There is nothing at the moment for me to... The vine will not support you. The vine will not... There is nothing at the moment for me. There is nothing at the moment. <coughs> nothing happens. Fascinating. It did appear to knock the vine down near to the point where one of us can reach it. Didn't they have baseball on Balkan? Show us your fastball, Jim. Baseball? No one plays that anymore. Don't tell Good that to Francisco. Francisco. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. There is nothing at the moment. The vine will not support you. Ah, there we go. The probability of getting the vine on the second try was only 36.53%. Well done, Captain. Probability? That was a perfect pitch if I ever saw one. All right! We're on our way! Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. Look at Kurt, like in the, the high school gym. Toloxac, priest of Quetzalcoatl. Only one who knows his ways may approach his holy ground. Go, Jim, go! Look at him, shake those hips. There is nothing at the moment from... 
There is nothing at the moment for me to do. Wait, he ran away. There is nothing at the moment. There is nothing at the moment. There is nothing at the moment. <laughs> gotcha. You fail to obtain. I love how Kirk just grabs a snake. I hate snakes. I hate snakes with a passion. <clears throat> <coughs> I am Toloxak, priest of Quetzalcoatl. Only one who knows his ways may approach his holy ground. Indeed, you know the ways of Quetzalcoatl, but only a man of courage, one who will shed blood, will pass. Self-sacrifice is the noblest quality of humanity. You may go. Beware the monster in the water. You may have my knife to defend yourself. Uh, thanks? Nothing happens. You pick up the beautifully crafted knife. Beautifully crafted knife. Nice. It would appear that the plant secretes a chemical that is a natural repellent to the creature. It has retreated far downstream, Captain. Ah, nice. Tricorder indicates unusual energy patterns in this direction, Captain. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. You 
You fail to obtain. You fail to obtain. <coughs> you will need something to pry it loose. Kirk the Barbarian. You have one dilithium crystal in raw form. Okay. I watched as you worked through the problems I set in your path. You are a valiant, intelligent species. Please sit down. We have much to discuss. Oh, okay. I've had it up to here, with so-called superior beings terrorizing my crew because we're so primitive. Maybe you should see how primitive you are before you go around testing others. One thing first, if you're so peaceful, how come the Aztecs were so violent and aggressive? Yes, I guess we do. Go on. I've had it up to here. Yes, I guess we do. Go on. I've had it up to here. Yes, I guess we do. Go first. I have one question. You are clearly not the liars I thought you to be. Were you telling me the truth about my disciples? That they became ruthless savages? The Federation is not in the business of lying, mister. Absolutely. Your best intentions were changed by the imperfect humans that you left in charge after you departed. Such is the way of our race, I'm afraid. You messed up in a big way. Perhaps you should try following the Prime Directive. It changed our lives. The Federation is not in the business. Absolutely. I sense truth in this. Perhaps this is what happened to my children on the Klingon world of Rakur, which would explain why they are searching for me. I have clearly abused the power that was given me long ago. You show great wisdom, sir, but your statement implies that you wish to change your condition. Indeed. If my mission of peace was overthrown, then I am no longer worthy of my power. Tell me, has your species made progress in the medical arts? We're a technologically advanced star-faring race. What do you think? That we wouldn't have made progress in medicine? With Dr. McCoy, I sometimes wonder, but yes, I would say we have made considerable advances. Yes, why do you ask? We're a technologically advanced... Yes, why do you ask? At the top of my spine is a gland not found in your species. This is the seat of my power. I wish you to remove it, thereby making me immortal. Jim, I'll try, but the physiology is completely alien. You've got to do it, Bones. If the Klingons realize he's no longer a threat to them, perhaps we can avoid a war. Scotty, five to beam up. This is a little bit of a different mission. So we just kind of left. Captain, three Klingon heavy battle cruisers have just entered the system. Admiral Kenka is hailing us, sir. Federation Starship, this is Admiral Blick Kenka of the Creator. You harbor a criminal who has caused the destruction of the entire population of Rakor. We are not prepared to negotiate. You will proceed to Rakhor, where a court of Cleon justice will be convened. If you refuse, we shall destroy you. Admiral Vlick, the criminal of whom you speak is in the middle of a very delicate medical procedure. He cannot be handed over to anyone at this time. I cannot believe Quetzalcoatl's mission to Rakhor would cause the deaths of the entire planet. Since when do Klingons give orders to Federation <clears throat> officers, Admiral? I realize it's difficult for a Klingon, but don't be a fool. Admiral Vlick. The criminal of whom you speak. His attempt to corrupt the Empire with his philosophy led to the destruction of all life on Hrakor. How could a philosophy of peace and non-violence cause the destruction of all life on Hrakor? Hrakor has been governed by my family for generations, but even they were corrupted by him. It was a matter of honor that his lies had to be silenced, no matter what the cost. My God, you killed your own people just because they acquired a philosophy that you disagreed with? So you killed them, your own family. You were responsible for the deaths, not Quetzalcoatl. You murdered them. You're insane. <laughs> Tell me how much do your commanders know about what you did? Or do you need to kill Quetzalcoatl to hide your own deeds? 
My God, you killed your own people just because... It was that creature's fault. Had he not interfered in our affairs, the people of Rakkor would be alive. <clears throat> Clearly, he is responsible. Message from Starfleet Command. I'll argue this with you later, Flick. Contact your superiors, Kirk. You may be surprised. I have bad news, Captain. The Organians have ruled that Quetzalcoatl's interference in Klingon affairs renders him subject to Klingon law. You are oh to turn your prisoner over to them at Rakur. Klingon law will permit you to observe or aid in his defense. But be very careful, <coughs> Jean. Starfleet out. Captain, you cannot turn him over to those butchers. That would be murder. We have no choice, Scotty. I'm afraid Quetzalcoatl has a date with Klingon justice. Set course for Rakur, Mr. Chekhov. Well, here we go. Very interesting. We're going to multiple planets in this mission. Or multiple places. Captain's Law. We have come to the ruined Klingon planet of Fakur to deliver our guest, the mythical entity Quetzalcoatl, to a Klingon court. Dr. McCoy, Mr. Spock, and Ensign Benny and I have been granted permission by the Organians to witness this trial, which I expect to be a travesty of any meaningful definition of justice. Spock, come with me. Mr. Scott, you have the con. There we go. Same crew. Yeah. See, I kind of wish I could pick my away team. Oh, God. The prisoner and his witnesses will stand forth, so the trial may begin. Uh, okay. So, like, here? So, Kirk, we finally meet. I had thought it would be in battle. But the universe <clears throat> holds many surprises. There's nothing less appealing than a gloating Klingon, Vlicht. Let's get this trial underway. Stick around, Vlicht. There are more surprises awaiting you. Why does every Klingon tell me they expected to meet me in battle? You really have a one-track mind. There's nothing less appealing than a gloating Klingon, Vlicht. Let's get this trial underway. So be it. This begins the trial of the entity Quetzalcoatl, who is charged with impersonating a Klingon. Stirring dissent, encouraging cowardice, and treason in the <clears throat> highest degree. Those are serious charges, Vlicht. Should he not be tried by a Klingon high court? He has not demonstrated honor, Kirk. Only a proven warrior may be tried in high court. Principles of honor are not applicable to his defense. I'm a warrior, Vlicht. I hereby intervene for him and demand the honors and responsibilities of a warrior's trial. Nice going, Kirk. Then this trial is a mockery for the entire galaxy to see. Oh, well, I'm afraid you're on your own, Quetzalcoatl. <laughs> Just be like, deuces, dude, I'm out. I'm a warrior, Vlicht. A Federation officer claiming the rights of a Klingon warrior. How dare you insult me, Kirk. I faced Klingons both in personal and ship-to-ship -ship combat. Your own records will confirm this. If I'm not worthy of their honors, why didn't they kill me? That oversight, Kirk, is easily rectified. You and your three companions may face the test that we set for the Defender. Then we shall see if you are as worthy as a Klingon. I want your word of honor, Vlicht, that Quetzalcoatl will not be harmed while we take these tests. Very well. You have my word. Captain Kalarax, transport them to the test of life. What is this place? Not much is known about Hwakur, Ensign. This would appear to be some sort of a mining installation. That creature might be a native life form. A test of courage? That is the Klingon way. I somehow doubt that Vlicht intends for us to survive this, whatever the outcome. We're the only thing that stands between him and the killing of Quetzalcoatl that he can justify. Why should he worry about justification, Captain? He's a Klingon. Murder is as natural to them as breathing. That's not true, Ensign. However, I suspect that Vlicht's attack on Harkur exceeded his orders. He needs Quetzalcoatl as a scapegoat, and he needs a fair trial to avoid an inquiry of his own actions. And our deaths will be the only way he can get it. Great! Uh, okay, so what are we doing about this? This creature is composed of electrical fields. I would not recommend approaching it. A metal projectile might disrupt <clears throat> its fields and render it harmless. These wooden rods are support beams that were not placed. This rock has a high iron content. Nothing to report. 
Nothing to report. This wall was carved from a natural rock. Wait, the floor is made of iron. So, and this is wood. Wait. You melt some of the rock. The rod with molten iron. <clears throat> it hardens quickly. Looks like a cigarette. Oh. As I suspected, Captain, the creature is in stasis. It should awaken in 3.48 days. I bet it'll be mad. Hopefully we won't be around to find out. Nothing to report, Captain. An entry coder for the door, keyed to a number sequence. The tricoder is unable to determine the code, but can scan the mechanism. Nothing to report. There is nothing at the moment from... Nothing to report. An entry coder for the door, keyed to a number sequence. The tricoder is unable to determine the code, but can scan the mechanism. A slightly antiquated <clears throat> Klingon lock mechanism. You look but see nothing of note. Captain, there is a force field between us and the planet. We have your position at approximately 30 meters beneath the surface of Rakor, in what appears to be the ruins of an archaeological dig. Keep us informed. We'll help you all we can. We can analyze any data you gather through the main computer. Uhura, prepare to receive a tricorder message. There is a door with an entry coder here. Try to analyze the circuits and let the main computer crack the code. Scan complete. Main computer has the code. We also read an anomaly. Something else has tapped into the key code. Shall I analyze? I want that door open. Affirmative, Uhura. I want that door open. <clears throat> Affirmative, Uhura. Sir, we have a secondary code that is nested in the Klingon program. Computer is unable to analyze its function. Shall we broadcast it to you when you activate the keypad? Affirmative. Good luck, Captain. <coughs> what is this place? This is not Klingon technology, Captain. Even I can see that, you pointy-eared freak. Gentlemen, I suggest we start trying to find out what this is. I have a feeling we've come someplace Blick wasn't expecting us to go. Okay. Okay. 
This large gem appears to be an emerald of unusual size. This is obviously artificial. This large gem appears to be a sapphire of unusual size. This is obviously artificial. This large gem appears to be a ruby of unusual size. This is obviously artificial. You look but see nothing of openings on the platform. Place something in these holes. I suspect, Captain, that the machinery is activated. Sorry. I suspect, Captain, that the machinery is activated by placing the gems in the proper slots. We should determine a system for this. Nothing to report, Captain. Captain, it seems to be some sort of interface device, but I do not know how to activate it. Nothing to report, Captain. Nothing to report, Captain. Nothing to report, Captain. is restricted to higher order functions. Neural interlink required. What? Neural interlink? What? <clears throat> this mission got weird. Nothing to report. Nothing to report. Nothing to report. Not prime for neural interlink. It's all green. Well, let's try all green, I guess. I, don't know. I thought it was going to go off the thing on the wall. <clears throat> For defense, use the light of war. For information, use my light. For transportation, use the light of travel. Sequences are keyed by combinations of crystals. Integrator now active. <coughs> Get no response. <coughs> I thought we had to ask him for information. Nothing happens, nothing happens. This is beyond the high mentalic of Rakur. For defense, use the light of war. For information, use my light. For transportation, use the light of travel. Sequences are keyed by combinations of crystal. Oh. Integrator now active. So information is the light of war, which is... Wait. There is nothing at the moment for me to pay. 
trying to get to the red one. Okay, so we have the red one, so let's put those in here. Damn it! Stop! Okay. Planetary defenses revived. All alien vessels in orbit destroyed. Load a previously saved game. Restart the game. Quit the game. Load a previously saved game. Wait, what? And now welcome back. We are now back to the point where I unceremoniously died. Okay, the red, bad. Red, very bad. So let's do the blue and see what happens. And I saved along the way, so actually I should probably save. <clears throat> so red we're not using. That one blows up the Enterprise. So we have green, we have blue. You fail to obtain... Before we do this, let's save again. Save new game. Replace previous. Okay. So we're gonna do blue this time and see what happens. <clears throat> it's like the infinity stones over there on the wall. Reality, time, and space. Transport you only in proximity of nearest humanoid life. Transport imminent. How dare you! The test was supposed to take place without interference from your ship! You have shown all lack of honor! Honor? Give me a break, Flicked. You were trying to kill us. I believe that the use of guile to do what the enemy does not expect is considered very honorable by the Klingons. You didn't say I wasn't allowed to use my ship's computer. You didn't explain the rules clearly. Whose fault is that? I believe that the use of- How dare you lecture me on points of honor! I, the most decorated <clears throat> warrior in the entire empire! I, who took the dishonored trash of my homeworld and destroyed it with a fist of steel! Then you admit it was you and not Quetzalcoatl who was responsible for the death of Frakor. Those who lose honor lose life, Kirk. It is the Klingon way. Then you will not object to presenting the orders from the Klingon Council, authorizing mass murder on Krakur. The trial is over. He is guilty. Done. Carry out the sentence. I won't let you. I shall... No, Captain. Let there be an end to this violence. I will not allow any more blood to be shed, save my own. I taught the doctrine of self-sacrifice, and I shall die of it. But before I die, I believe that Klingon law allows me to make a public statement. Intelligent beings are not meant to be caged either by tyranny or barbarism. Those who try doom themselves to failure. Once a culture has tasted peace, it will not desire anything else because peace is better than war. Love is better than hate. And creation is better <clears throat> than destruction. This is truth. I, who was once immortal, know that truth is the only true immortal. You can kill people, cultures, even gods. But the truth will always survive. The death ceremony shall take place aboard the Cleata. I trust you are satisfied that justice has been done. Did you listen to anything he said? One day, in spite of people like you, the Klingons will know peace. I hope I live to see that day. I don't know if you're a praying man, Vlig. If I were you, I would not want to meet me again. Justice? Did you listen to anything he said? Justice? Did you listen to anything he said? One day... Scotty, beam us up. So we just 
leave him to die? Captain's log. We've returned to Federation space having tried and failed to save a new friend. Quetzalcoatl was a remarkable creature, Captain. It is a great loss. He died for what he believed in. Yet so did many men who were judged by history to be evil. Dictators, assassins. Self-sacrifice in itself is not a virtue. <clears throat> Still, I cannot find it in my heart to condemn him. He had a great dream of peace, and it's been left to others to fulfill it. Let's get started. Ahead, warp factor two to Alpha Proxima, Mr. Sulu. Hi. We have read your report on the problems at Rakur and evaluate your performance at 64%. You and your crew received one commendation points. A satisfactory performance, Captain, but there's still room for improvement. Okay, let's try the green. They didn't, we didn't even really get a chance to use the green. Like, we, we hooked it up, but... <clears throat> For defense, use the light of war. For information, use my light. For transportation, use the light of travel. Sequences are keyed by combinations of crystals. Integrator now active. This is Bialbi, the most advanced life form on this world. Thank you for informing us of the situation. It shall be resolved. Admiral Vlicht, this is the defensive system of Rakur. You have engaged in genocidal activities on this world. Have you anything to say before your sentence is passed? Kirk! This is your doing! No, Admiral, it is not. But that will suffice as a final public statement. The sentence is banishment to you and all members of your crew who were involved in this action. You have no right to try me! I have as much right as you to conduct trials on this planet. You showed no justice to your victim. The penalty for injustice is death. Kirk! Hoist on your own petard, Evlicht. Eh, Do you want me to help you? You tried to send me to my death. Now you can rot as you get what you deserve. If I have your word that Quetzalcoatl goes free, <clears throat> I'm willing to intervene to save you. Hoist on your own petard. If I have your word that Quetzalcoatl goes free, I'm willing to intervene. Agreed. A life for a life is a just bargain. But his crimes are beyond count. I do not see what can be served by more killing. Idealism, an <laughs> advanced concept. Naive, perhaps, but charming in its simplicity. Admiral Vlicht, the entity Quetzalcoatl shall be set free. If you ever return to this sector, the sentence shall be carried out. No Klingon vessel may ever return to this world. <sighs> Very well. I agree to your terms. As for you, Captain, you may return. I find your social development most <clears throat> pleasing. I fear that politics will make it impossible. Your planet is in Klingon space. But I don't understand why the Klingons never detected you. Their archaeological digs did come close, Captain, but I am very elusive. I waited and monitored the situation and chose to reveal myself to you. Oh. Now you may go. Heed my warning, Vlicht. I shall not be merciful a second time. Nice. Bye, Vlicht. And all five of us come home. Klingon ship leaving the area. We will be setting course for Digifowl. It's the closest thing to a home that Quetzalcoatl has. It would appear everything worked out for the best. Except for the people of Rakur, Mr. Spock. Except for the dead. Yeah. So we dropped Quetzalcoatl back off at... We have read your report on the problems at Rakur and evaluate your performance at 100%. You and your crew received four commendation points. A perfect mission, Jim. You are a model for all Starfleet. That old devil moon. That old devil moon. 
Message from Starfleet, sir. On screen, Lieutenant. The Enterprise will proceed to the Alpha Proxima system. While the indigenous race on Proxima 3 has not reached a technological level commensurate with entering the Federation, and therefore under the protection of the Prime Directive of non-interference, we do maintain a discrete monitoring satellite. It has picked up activity from an asteroid in an elliptical orbit. You are to investigate <coughs> without interfering with life on the planet. According to the library computer, the Alpha Proxima system has five planets and an asteroid belt. A large asteroid is heading towards the inner planets and should pass close by Proxima 3. It passes through the interior of the system once every 200 years. The people of Proxima 3 call it Scythe, the same name as their god of war. God of war, Mr. Spock? Isn't that a bit surprising from a people whose technology matches 20th century Earth? Considering the level of warfare during that century, I'm surprised that it is Earth that did not have a god of war. In any case, about a millennium ago, Proxima III suffered a globally devastating war. Blew themselves back to the Stone Age, Mr. Spock? Hey, Mr. Chekhov. The Bronze Age, Ensign. They rewrote their <coughs> world in half the time it had taken to get there originally. But the Armageddon was mythologized as a battle between the Sofs and Lucas. In that war, the planet was raised, and all the gods died except Sine. He had rained fury down upon the world, <coughs> and went off on a long dance of victory. His return is a time for worldwide soul-searching and atonement. And Scythe returns, and our monitoring station picks up activity. It would seem that we should proceed to Alpha Proxima and scan Scythe. Okay. Well, I think I'm going to call it right here. I hate the way this game is formatted. Like, you can't not go into the next mission before, so... But anyway, so I'm going to wrap it up here. I appreciate it, anyone, for watching here on Twitch. If you're watching on YouTube, please don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe to North Coast Gaming. Um, I'm going to be finishing... I think there's a couple missions left in this, so we'll be, fin we'll be finishing it up. So, catch you guys in the next one. See you later.